My name is uh, Gerald Harbach. My uh, last spelling, last name spelling is H A R B A C H. That's a German name. Yes. So you are Amer German American. Uh, my great grandfather came from around uh, Frankfurt. Frankfurt. Yes. I've been there. Have you been there? Yes, I have. Yeah. It's a big city now. Yeah, there's a creek outside of Frankfurt named Harbach Creek. Uh -huh. So that were supposedly our roots came from. Mm. Yeah. And I see that you have a bronze star? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Let's talk about that, okay? Yeah, I, 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 well, I got that for probably Alpo Terry for uh, the, the, and I, I just learned I, I had a stroke here uh, about uh, the end of uh, November. I, I learned that I still have a piece of shrapnel in my forehead. Oh, really? I didn't know I had it. I, I thought they took it out. Or I, I they, they asked me if I uh, had any metal, and I said no. And uh, the doctor said, uh, yeah, you do have a piece of metal on your forehead. Oh, my it's goodness. It's a piece of shrapnel. And yeah. It's a small piece. So, uh, so let's talk about that later. But what is your birthday? April 12, 29. You were born on the Great Depression. Yes. <laughs> yeah. In Where were you born? Uh, here in Freeport. Yeah. So you, this is your hometown. Yes. You know many things about this city. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, that's where I started out mm -hmm. and ended up. <laughs> so tell me about your parents when you were growing up and your siblings. Uh, my father, uh, he came from the farm. Uh, and uh, my mother, she, her parents, her father was a railroad worker in Stockton, Illinois. Mm. And my dad, uh, his father was a farmer uh, at Wattage Grove, that's uh, west of uh, Lena. Mm. And uh, he, my dad was the oldest boy in the family, and he had uh, one sister and three brothers. And uh, he he became a molder in a foundry, and he learned the trade of molding. And uh, when the depression came on, why uh, he didn't have too much work, uh, and uh, working on one day a week. So uh, his father had a place to butcher uh, pork on his farm. Mm -hmm. So he started butchering pigs and sell them the sausage. Huh? So that's how we got into the, uh, we still butcher and we, we sell uh, pork and we added beef. We have our own feed lot and, and we uh, feed beef cattle and uh, we used to feral pigs. We now buy feed of pigs and... and uh, that's great. Uh, I Actually, I was on the way to the restaurant and I found your meat yeah. place there. Mm -hmm. Harbuck meat. Yeah, right, meat. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's uh, my stomping ground. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you inherited this business with yeah. from yeah. your father. My my oldest boy, uh, he runs that business now. Him and his wife, mm. and uh, we had uh, uh, two other boys, but they one wife didn't care for the uh, farm mm. and the. Uh, Younger one that he didn't think uh, he, he he went south to Florida and and, and became a meat cutter down there. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. Can you move a little bit your hat because it's a shade here. Move up, move up. Move it up. Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's good. That's better. Okay. All right. So when did you graduate high school? Uh, Nineteen forty-seven. Uh huh. And what did you do? Uh, you, I, did you graduate Freeport High School? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, played football. Was going to go to college. Mm. Had had a partial scholarship to go to Northwestern State, and uh, and then uh, was going with uh, my wife to be was from Rockford, and uh, anyway. Uh, about a week before I was 
ready to leave to college uh, and start football practice, why I uh, had a car accident. Oh. And it was the, uh, another, uh, it was a state fire marshal, and, and it was his fault. And uh, so uh, uh, to get my car uh, insurance taken care of, I, I didn't go to college then. And, and I started butchering with my dad. Hmm. Uh, in the winter time, summer time, I did construction work with the black tie. I see. Yeah, and we in 1948 then, in the fall of 48, I, I married my wife ah. at that time, and and uh, so that was uh, I put your winter time and work construction work in the summer time. Mm -hmm. And when did you join the army? Well, I, I uh, out of high school, I joined the National Guard mm -hmm. in September. Of uh, I graduated in June, and September, we joined the National Guard, and uh, several other graduates did that same thing. And we stayed in the Guard, uh, did a three-year hitch, and we go to summer encampment, mm -hmm. and uh, made a little extra money that way, and. Uh, and uh, after three years, uh, we, after two years, we had my wife and me had a daughter, and uh, she was born. And uh, the we re up to the guard for another three years, and a year into that, uh, just about a year into that enlistment, uh, they activated the guard. Mm. When was it? Called it up. When? They activated it immediately. When? Called it up. When? Well, we were, uh, as a National Guard unit, we lived at home and we had meetings uh, once a week. So when your duty was called, when was it? 19? I, I was, uh, I would have been, uh, when I married, I was 19. Uh, then. We had our daughter was 20, and then uh, when they called the guard, it would have been 21. 21 is... Uh, 20, no, 20, 19, 22 when they called the guard. 1951? Uh, yeah, let's see. No, it would have been 52. I went into January of 52. When, and when did you leave for Korea? Uh, I went to weapons school and, and uh, leadership school. I, I was going to go to OCS, but uh, the blacktop was working pretty busy and I thought my wife would need more, the money. So uh, we had a child and she worked also. So I called, I told them I didn't want to, or I wasn't, wasn't going to go to OCS. So then they, January come and work slowed down in the blacktop. So then I went to leadership school and, and uh, weapons school. And then uh, that was uh, about four months before the rest of the unit had to take off. And then after six months or so in the States and training, and I helped train our unit and then uh, I got my orders to go to Korea then in September of uh, 52. So where did you arrive in Korea? Incheon? Uh, in September. Incheon? Where? I, 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 uh, I, I was assigned to the 3rd Division, 15th Infantry. Yeah, Incheon. Incheon. Yeah, I, I'm... From Incheon, where did you go? Okay, uh, in China, uh, they uh, went to supply company for third division, mm -hmm. and then they uh, sent us to our companies. Uh, my company was on Hill 300 in the Chorwan Valley. Chorwan Valley. In the Iron Triangle, and and uh, they were pulling a platoon-sized uh, outpost, Tom. And Jackson Heights was was uh, one of the uh, they part of the time 
they stayed at the, in Jackson Heights in a cave on the top, and they fought over that cave at night. Uh, and uh, they got to be too many casualties, so they let the Chinese have the cave at night, and then they'd take it back at daylight. Hmm. Uh, first day, uh, we, we dug uh, trenches in that area for if they had to fall back or anything, uh, so uh, to re regroup you know, on some high ground. And uh, we, from September, uh, well, I, really November, and and uh, and then the first day of December, we went to. Uh, I went out to. That's the first combat I got into. Went to uh, out to outpost town, hmm. and it was when assembly. When I left the assembly area, uh, it had been raining, and. Uh, it uh, had been quite mild weather. We didn't have no winter clothes yet. And uh, we got soaking wet. And uh, I was heavy weapon platoon, so we had trouble keeping up with the... With, we should have led the uh, patrol out there because we was carrying the load. And the company commander didn't... He ran off and... and Pretty soon we, I couldn't keep up and we set up our own perimeter and caught our breath. And then it's, it's middle of the night and, and we followed, there was a trench to get out there, but, but the trench is half full of water. It's mm -hmm. pouring down rain all the time. Well, then when we got out to where the trench ended, by the company commander says, oh, I, I should have left you guys set the pace. And I said, yeah, you should. I was sort of disgusted. <laughs> but anyway, so we, we relieved King Company, uh, shook hands with the guy from King Company, and they started shelling us. And a round come in and killed the guy that just should, shook hands with. <laughs> and uh, anyway, the bunkers were bad, and the guys were taking the body of their mate uh, uh, removing it because there wasn't enough room for two. Uh, it was only about a two platoon size uh, place to, uh, for cover. And uh, King Company was leaving. They had quite a few casualties leaving. Well, the snow turned in. Well, it started to snow then. We got it. By morning, the snow stopped and it was approaching zero weather, and we're soaking wet. Whoa. <laughs> so for five days and five nights, the only sleeping we did was standing up. Because we, we were, and uh, the last day, they brought winter clothes up to us and make them up. How did you survive that weather? With the water in it, in the foxhole? Well, in the uh, trench? We, we didn't have fox, well, we had foxholes as listening posts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, and that tire out, the ground wasn't froze. But the first night, you hug that ground, you're all wet, and then it got colder and colder, and, and so it, it was a bad night. <laughs> uh -huh. And, and uh, but then sleeping, standing up, we just leaned against the for fear of freezing. We had quite a few guys in frostbite. They had frozen feet, and some guys, I had a frozen ear, mm. and, and didn't realize it, it uh, real, never did. It's, it's like cardboard now. Cardboard. <laughs> yeah, it, it uh, crinkle, or you know, it, it's real gristle, mm -hmm. it turned into gristle after it froze. But that, the, the worst, worst was going to come later when we got to Outpost Terry. We had three out, uh, outposts, was Tom, Dick, and Harry, and Jackson Heights was part of the, uh, that first morning that we had, it was a, everything froze, and uh, we went out to Jackson Heights, mm -hmm. and we started at a stone fence. 
and it was about four, uh, probably 300 yards to, Jackson, to the base of Jackson Heights. Jackson Heights had three levels, points. We got to the first point, and the uh, lieutenant said, test fire your weapons, and test fired the automatic weapons. Well, that night before, the Chinese thought we was at the second level, and they had dynamited the second level, and they set the dynamite off at the second level, but we were only at the first level, and they had boulders rolling down that mountain-sized automobiles. Hmm. It, uh, we lost two men from Bolton. Uh, pushed them over the side, they got mad. Uh, and anyway, uh, we're lucky we wasn't up at the second level. <laughs> they they was in the cave at the top, and and, and so he, and it wasn't too long they bugged out of the cave. Hmm. But after that, we left that area, and then, and then we had uh, OP Tom was just a more of a two squad pilot post, and OP Harry. Uh, we got it about third-handed, and it was getting spring. And uh, then O.P. Gary commanded the view. It was the highest thing. It was 900 yards in front of the M MLR. And uh, I was sending men up to build bunkers. They brought us some 2x12s. They were about 10 foot long. Mm. and. Uh, we put across, the engineers helped us the first two days and built the bunkers and they uh, brought choggy bears, bought stuff up for us. Uh, the lumber was brought, uh, they did quite a bit of the hauling. But we never seen the engineers after two days. <laughs> we was on our own. But we re rebuilt the bunkers and we was digging up bodies that had and the bunkers were uh, caved in from artillery shells and buried the guys that was inside, seventh, the guys in the 7th Division. We had quite a few. Uh, we probably took up uh, eight guys or so that was in a couple of bunkers. Other guys took them, a different one. Hmm. The bunkers, prior to that, they weren't too good, but these bunkers we made with the 2 by 12 they were good bunkers. Mm. They, they, we used six posts, six 2 by 12 spiked together for a post, and we put a 50 caliber machine gun bunker, and, and, and that was always the first thing they went for when they hit the outpost was that 50 caliber machine gun. What was your unit? Well, the, what was the unit I served with? Yeah. Uh, it was the 3rd uh, Division, 15th Infantry Regiment, 2nd mm -hmm. Battalion, George Company. 2nd Battalion? Mm -hmm. George Company. Right. And I was Weapon Platoon Sergeant. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that was... Uh, I, I, we didn't go on as many patrols as the riflemen did. But we used to go on patrol. We'd take a mortar with them and not leave the pipe on. And, and we'd use uh, on patrols. It was nice to have the mortar along if you was pinned down or something. It, 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 a lot more punch there than a hand grenade. Hmm. Yeah. How did you get the bronze star? It was just uh, for. Uh, Bravery? Uh, when? When? How it happened? It was for combat experience. Uh, uh, mine was uh, what? What are they? Uh, her, what do they call it? Heroic? Yeah, heroic. Yeah, uh, it, 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 uh, for teaching combat experience to my platoon, and because you had a lot of guys when they come up there, they didn't 
have no experience. But in, uh, it would have been in... Push up over? Well... What? Your head, push. Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I was going to take it off and look at it. Right. <laughs> yeah, look at it. Look yeah. at it. On, on the like, heroic, they had wrote it on the side. And the, uh, uh, we were, we got overran in a April the 3rd, because I almost didn't make my birthday. We overran, fought hand to hand. And, and, uh, one of my men, uh, he, he, you shoot anybody out of a trench, anybody on a trench line, and, and he, he was coming, he run from one bunker, he was going to try and lift the rounds. He didn't realize they had outnumbered us in the trenches, and he was going to try and call in, tell them to lift them, that they're, they're shelling us. Well, the reason he was shelling us is Broken arrow. Have you ever heard that expression? It, it uh, they they overran us, and, and our own artillery was uh, throwing shrapnel down. And and uh, uh, if you didn't have head overhead cover, you were dead. Mm -hmm. and, and anyway, he comes out of his bunker to run into where the radio was in the CB bunker, and he ran right into a Chinaman. <laughs> Hmm. And the Chinaman shot him across the chest, broke his shoulder, and he, with his good hand, he, he grabbed the burp gun from the Chinaman, and there's two Chinamen up on the outside of the trench, and he's hanging on to that burp gun, and that Chinaman chewed the end of his trigger finger, <laughs> trying to make him leave go of that. Yeah. But he didn't let it go. He, he hung on for dear life. <laughs> Rogers was his name. I, I, after that night, because he had his shoulder broke, I never seen him after that night. He, he got through. Yeah, hmm. it, uh, he rotated. If you got a broken bone, you go home. Yeah. And anyway, uh, he made her. We, we survived that night, and. Uh, we were pulled off the next morning. Another company replaced us then. And then it was, there was a big push. Three Chinese armies, or two, some of them said there was only two Chinese armies overran two rock divisions or three rock divisions, and they went 29 miles in one night. That would have been, uh, See. Oh, that, that that was after O.P. Terry the second time uh, in June. We then we was we had to go back up on Harry in June, and then we really got we had to assault it in June, and uh, I told my men it. Uh, there was a lot of enemy up there, but, and, and we were there. It was just it, it was getting dusk, and uh, I didn't know how many people were on top. And I told them, I said, "Well, the quicker we're on top, the, the better we are." And, and when we assaulted that, we started about on a, on a clock. We started on like seven o'clock on the reverse. And assaulted them, right? Not too far from the ridge that went up there. Well, uh, uh, as luck would have it, we we were pretty lucky. We we did. There wasn't nobody shooting down on us. We and our own forces were still up there. Mm. But they, uh, uh, we had a 57 recoilless rifle up there, and we had a bazooka, and we had one mortar, and, and we had a 50 caliber machine gun down on the MLR. And, and anyway, we got up there, uh, and I was never, uh, I'll, I'll never forget that assault, because I was so winded I couldn't hardly 
I've never swallowed a breath in my life. <laughs> you were scared? Yeah, we, we just saw it just as hard as we could go. Because shells were coming in, and the longer you're in that shell fire, the less chance you've got to make it. So stuff was coming in, and, and it wasn't as bad as later when, when the assault got worse. And, and, uh, but they, our artillery, by later, they, uh, 63,000 rounds uh, in that, that afternoon. That was the third day of fighting on Outpost Terry. Wow. We lost half of our company, over half of our company. That, and they took us off and we didn't have a company anymore. And then the company, they, were, they, they went every night for eight nights, they assaulted. And, and uh, the Greeks held it the last night. The Greeks had it, uh, that was a Friday night, I think, was, was the last night. But they, they hit her every night for eight nights. And they, they, Must be a hell. Well, the, the bodies, uh, uh, some of those pictures were the bodies of, and that night. June, there was a lot more bodies than in April. But, but there's a horseshoe, and they would all come up in that horseshoe, the, the, the assaulters. And, and, and they, some of them would get out of the ridges, but, but they came a lot. Uh, uh, were you thinking that you were going to be die? Pardon? Were you thinking that you might die? I, well, I left my camera with the mail clerk because I didn't think I was going to need it no more. <laughs> I, I, the, the pictures of the bodies I got from another guy, yeah. But, but the first time, in April, I had my own camera with me. Where did you buy? Uh, the, uh, every month we used to have cameras in our uh, supply, uh, like candy bars. PX? Rations that we got. Well, and they'd usually be a half a dozen cameras. So you bought it? I bought one of my cameras. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I went with a camera, a 35 millimeter German camera, folded camera. It, I used to carry it in my chest pocket. Mm -hmm. and, and then I got a better, I got a German Contessa that I carried. Still have it, but don't use the 35 anymore. So you participated in a very severe battle there in Triangle and Jackson Heights, Outpost, Outpost Tom and so on. You survived that. What do you think about that now? Think about it, those battles. What do you think? Well, we, we you know, it, it, it's bad times and, and it, it, uh, for the love of country, the, 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 uh, the Koreans wanted, you know, they wanted what we had, and they wanted to be free too. Yeah. And, and I respected that, and, and uh, uh, we, we had uh, uh, Korean soldiers that was uh, Juno, Kim Jun Wan, was an outstanding soldier with him. He was there with the 3rd Division right from day one. He started with them. Hmm. And uh, we, there was another one, he wasn't in my platoon, Shorty, we called him. Uh, and uh, he was wounded and, and uh, I guess he went home, I, I'm not sure. But I had a, uh, another that came later, Hachi Sung. And, and uh, good soldier, and and uh, uh, Juno, uh, he uh, and after April and uh, June, he asked me if I would see if if he could go uh, uh, to the Korean Korea? Army because he would be uh, uh, sergeant first class. Then that's what I was for. Uh, 
And, and uh, I asked the company commander about that, and we got him. He got transferred to, to the. Uh, but I often wonder. Then we had the big push where it was either two or three Chinese armies overran in the Kuma Valley mm -hmm. there, and and that was uh, that's where the armistice come to the July 27th, you know, and that that was disarray. Everybody that was we was they went 29 miles in one night. And, and everything was, uh, there was no, uh, everything was muddled. And, and, and we were short of ammo. And uh, we, that night we moved, was walking off of, uh, uh, to the rear. Yeah. And, and uh, the artillery going, we said, oh, boy, somebody's getting there tonight, you know. And the boy it kept on, kept on. You can tell. On, on uh, when we was on Alpo Terry, we could see what was going on across the Tormont Valley and Pork Chop and Whitehorse. Whitehorse, there wasn't much fighting on during my time there, but Pork Chop, there was a lot of fighting on Pork Chop. And Pork Chop extended out in behind Whitehorse Mountain, and that was across the Tormont Valley. That Tormont Valley was seven miles across there, that's, that's where we. And uh, I got pinned down by a machine gun out in Toron Valley, recon. There's a red train out there, and, and I, I don't know how the guy missed it. I had five guys for a recon patrol, and they, they had a, uh, they wanted to bring two tanks out there on the railroad tracks and shoot up the Chinese outpost and went out to the daylight recon patrol and a machine gun from he, uh, he was sort of a long shot, about okay. 700 yards, I think. Man, he opened up on us five guys. And we had no place to hide. We we just kept running, and he kept shooting, and he didn't hit one of us. And we had bullets going past our head. And, and they, when a bullet goes past your head, it's just like snapping a whip when, when they crack the velocity. Yeah. When did you leave Korea? Uh, about a week after the armistice. Uh -huh. My enlistment was up, and and uh, I got home uh, late for my enlistment. Uh, the uh, I was almost a civilian platoon sergeant because they froze rotation when the, that big push happened. Mm -hmm. when, uh, but I, I was, uh, I had enough points. I had 40 points. You could rotate with 38. Have you been back to Korea? No, I haven't. I thought a lot about it, but mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't. Do you want to go? Since, uh, well, if you could go to Alpo Terry, I don't know. Uh, uh, but that's out in the DMZ. They, they, they did, took one group up there. That was a, a lot of guys lost their life there. Right. That's a, and the Chinese, just uh, one night they lost 3,000, they said. I, uh, I don't know how, I don't know who counted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's, uh, it, it's, it's not a very good way to settle your problems, I'll tell you that. Uh, Do you know South Korea right now? How they are doing? Oh, yeah, they think they, they've done super well. Yeah. How do you know? What well, do you know? The news, and, and, and uh, they've done well, and, and, and I'm glad to see they do. And they've been a good ally. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you, I, I'm a little disappointed in this uh, president taking the money under the table, and she's let her people down, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 uh, it, it's so important mm -hmm. to have the honor of your country, and, and, and we're having a little trouble with that right now. I, I, uh, uh, it, it, uh, I, I probably shouldn't say 
too much about it. I, I, uh, Mr. Trump's got good ideas. I, and I, I, I just, I was afraid Hillary was going to win because she scared me. I got no use for her. Mm. <laughs> I, 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 she scares me. Yeah. Are you proud of your service? Yes, very much so. Mm. Why? I, I had, well, uh, that's part of who we are. Mm -hmm. I had uncles in World War II. Uh, they were all, uh, I had one in the Battle of the Bulge in the infantry. I had another one that uh, was a bombardier on a, a B-24. He did 80 some, I don't know, not 80, what, what was the mission? 20, 28 missions over Germany mm -hmm. on a B-24. Uh, that was before the war ended, he come home. He did 24 missions. Mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, but I, I, I think uh, if I had to, you know, if I was going to do it again, I, I don't think I'd pick the infantry. <laughs> you had enough, right? Yeah. You had enough. Yeah, there's no babies. You, you, I, I, I had 12 close calls. Uh, and, and we was cooking sea rations one time. Yeah. Five of us, a little fire. Two rounds, 60 millimeter mortars come in, wounded one of the mortar men. Mm. And we're heating our sea rations in our fire. One 60 millimeter mortar come right down, lit in our fire. <laughs> oh, jeez. It was a dud. Oh, my. God. You survived that. Right, right. I, said, I, I had a guy open up with a, that night, they overran us. I had a flak vest on. He shot me right over the heart. <laughs> it, it just an inch, I didn't have it zipped up, and he just caught a half inch and knocked me down and hit my head. Half knocked, knocked me out. <laughs> you were very lucky. Pardon? You were very lucky. Yes, I was. Yeah. 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 Well, it was God blessings. Yeah. What is the legacy of the Korean War? What is what? Legacy. Well, importance of the Korean War. South, South Korea got, they were supposed to have their democracy and they got their democracy. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that uh, I'm glad they did. And they have been a good ally. And, and, and uh, it, it's, uh, you, you like to have those kind of neighbors. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Exactly. In honor, I, I, uh, I, I, I'm a very firm believer. Uh, do things in a Christian manner. Mm -hmm. I, 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 uh, uh, I think without God's help, I probably wouldn't have come through the Korean War. Mm. Because I had a lot of fellow, a lot of friends that didn't come. I stood beside them when they died. Mm. It, and uh, it, it. Uh, yeah, it, it, it was a, uh, uh, it was a, I, 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 uh, my, my uncles and stuff, having been in World War II, and, and I had a lot of respect for the military. Yeah. And, and the, 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 uh, and it, we should have, uh, respect, but, uh, politics, uh, they turn, turn out to be bad things. You lose your iron, your honor is lost in politics. Yeah. Very good point. Yeah. And, 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 and shameful. Yeah. That, that, uh, honor we have to end, uh, um, uh, but is there any other important point that you want to make? Uh, I can't think of anything else for Really, really. I know you have so many episodes yeah, because you fought there in the trial, trial, ang trial, ang yeah. my triangle region where that was Cholwon, Kumhwa, right? And yeah, the, 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 it, it's very surprising on how, how many, uh, what, what some countries will go through, how many lives they're willing to sacrifice. It's just like Alpo Terry. 
they were willing to sacrifice all those lives. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many they lost, but that night we was on, on there, they lost about 3,000 lives. And That's so amazing. Yeah, uh, it, 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 that went on just about every night. And, and that eight, eight nights of that, it, 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 it's uh, too much. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 uh, you you wonder uh, how uh, 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 that, that that's uh, uh, it's a lot easier to be a general than it is, <laughs> <laughs> is a rifleman. Yeah. <laughs> Gerald, mm -hmm. I want to thank you on behalf of Korean nation yeah. that you fought for us, and so that we were able to rebuild our nation. You, you, and we want to thank you for your fight. Yeah, we, we, I was impressed with my Korean soldiers. They, they, they done good, and, and they were honorable. And uh, they hardly ever had a bad one. If ever I had a bad one, I, I sent them off to the rifle platoon. <laughs> <laughs> it was a punishment. But, but I, I could pick. They had to be, good, or for the heavy weapon platoon, they had to do a good job. Or, yeah, right. Or there was no point of being there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, Gerald. It was good.